I'm Tiffany Young, Executive Director for the Hartford Yard Goods Foundation. Welcome to Foundational Community Conversations, where February's feature is Black History Makers right here in our community. We'll be right back with our special guest, Abdul Rahman Muhammad. Given the history of black communities from royalty to slave ships, from impoverished communities to senseless gun violence, why is mental health and mental wellness overall so important for our community? Welcome back and welcome Abdul Rahman Muhammad, Executive yes. Director and Founder of My People Clinical Services. Yes, yes. It is our pleasure to have you here today, sir. I'm happy to be here as well. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I started My People back in 2005 uh, with the desire to support, empower, and rebuild our community. Um, I'm a graduate of Tougaloo College and I uh, got my master's degree at Clark Atlanta University and I came back home to be able to make a difference in our community. So why is mental health and just overall mental wellness so important to the black and brown communities? Well, the thing is we have to take care of ourselves, right? So some, we have generational trauma. There's, there's a many things that have happened to the African American community. And I think that, you know, by, by utilizing mental health services, that allow for us to address some of the mental health needs that we have in our community but I, you, you said wellness and I thought that was important too because not everything is about going to therapy or attending groups mm -hmm. sometimes we need to go get a massage sometimes we need to go you know get some acu acupuncture or something like that something that makes us feel better you know we're carrying a lot of baggage from mm -hmm. our lives from the stressors that are out there in the world and you know being able to u utilize different services and supports is very important for our community you know we uh, as a community usually um, avoid using these services yeah. we just keep grinding we keep going and I think that um, you know there's been a change and I think our people are learning more to be able to take care of themselves and so I think it's of the utmost importance you know to be able to get those supports that they need to be able to move forward in a, in a better way and so what would you say to folks who really don't know how to tap into those resources, right? Um, and you know, you talked a little bit about therapy and mm -hmm. yes, I think as a community, we absolutely are getting better, mm -hmm. but I also still, I'm in conversations and spaces where it's still taboo. Right. So how do we convince um, our communities that these resources are out here and make them accessible, yeah. more importantly? Well, you know, most of the time, uh, people's experience with mental health services comes in through DCF, right? Mm. And so when you come, when you, when you know, everybody you know who has gone to therapy was because they were involved with DCF. Anybody that's going to a group that's because of DCF, it becomes taboo. And so we have to let people understand that DCF doesn't, con you don't have to go through DCF to get to the services. You can call my people right now and come come mm -hmm. and see one of my highly qu qualified therapists. There's tons of African American owned organizations in the greater Hartford community that can be able to help you in a variety of different ways where you can make a choice. So like I, I'm an advocate for people saying something's not going right with me and I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to make a choice to be able to help myself get better. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better friend. And I got to deal with the stuff that I'm, I've been going through. And so I think that the way that that's done is being, being able to go out. And if you don't like the person you choose, right, you could say like, hey, this, one, this person doesn't work for me. I'm going to go try somebody else. But we don't have to continue to um, overwhelm our friends who are not therapists. <laughs> or even, you know, sometimes I, I saw this thing on the, on, on the news the other day where people are starting to go to their pastors, but their pastors aren't necessarily equipped to deal with all of the things that they're getting, you know, brought to them. And so let the professionals help you in the way that they do. And I think that um, by utilizing the different supports out there in our community, we could really make a big difference. 
Yeah, well, you know, I would be remiss if, if I didn't highlight you and the work that you're doing mm -hmm. because, yes, you are obviously a business owner, and I understand yeah. you have over 100 employees. So, mm -hmm. first of all, let's congratulate you for that because that is black history yeah. in the making. Right. Um, and I know you have an amazing wife mm -hmm. who is also working with you as well, yeah. and I'm sure the driving engine behind this. So, just the two of you as a power couple are truly an example mm -hmm. for so many people throughout the communities. Mm. Um, but you go far beyond just my people clinical services. I know about performances that you do yes. and groups that you have. Um, and even going out public speaking, I see you in so many places. Mm -hmm. But why is that stuff so important beyond just your business? Because I, for, of course, it's great. You're a black owned business, right? right? right. Um, a thriving business. But you do so much more than that. And yeah. you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But you choose to do that. And why is that? Well, you know, my business is called My People. Mm hmm. And I, I genuinely love my people. Like, and so we named it my people because of our desire to help. Like, if I say that you're my people, you know what that means, right? Right. Absolutely. And so it's really one of those things where for us, I mean, I'm like really kind of committed to this community. I'm committed to um, uplifting our people. You know, I do motivational stuff. I do, like you said, I do a lot of different things, but it's because I feel like, you know, I, I think another piece of it is, you know, I've had health issues throughout my life mm -hmm. and I'm always like going for my last shot. So if I'm going to live wow. my life, I'm going to be able to say, like, I did everything I wanted to do. There was nothing holding me back from right. being who I wanted to be. And so I always kind of like if I come up with an idea, my ideas don't stay on the paper. My ideas become reality. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage other people to live like that, too. You know, I always say never stop dreaming. Mm -hmm. And so, like, for me, it's really one of those things where. I, I believe in that. I, I'm always thinking about, okay, what am I going to do next? And, um, you know, how can I help these people or who do I want to work with? And so I just create stuff and I just go out and try to make it happen. And I believe that anybody can do that. I don't feel like I'm special in that and like that like I have something special. I think that most people um, hold themselves back. They're going to wait for that, that special day. And for me, I'm like a person that says like, yo, there ain't no special day. And you might, you, you only have so many days, right? So... For me, I'm like, I'm going to go out there and just go after it and see what happens. Wow, that is so admirable. I, I think you're speaking to masses of people in um, different ways just in that statement alone. I, I'm going to definitely have you back to talk more on that okay. because I think sometimes we do. We just have to be risk takers, right? Yeah. And that's truly what makes a change maker a mm -hmm. change maker. Yeah, yeah. You know? And we're talking about change makers, and I think so much about our youth, and you do a lot of work with youth as well. Um, as a trailblazer yourself, and a black history maker, what advice would you give to our youth who one day are going to make their mark in history as well? Mm -hmm. Well, what I would say to our youth is that I would start off with like, never stop dreaming. I, that would be my, my first thing. Every day, go after your dreams, right? But I think that um, I would also say to them that you have to prepare yourselves. Like, you, you're not just going to get something because you want it, right? You have to go have you have to have the credentials you have to have the, mm. the the work ethic you have to do more than other people you know so like you have to really push yourself if you want to be a quote unquote trailblazer you know right. you don't just become a trailblazer um overnight you have to be like constantly putting in the work and so i will just say to, to young people like be that person if you're going to work for somebody when you have a job be the person that works harder than everybody else. If you're going to start a business, don't think that it's just going to pop up and just you're going to be a millionaire overnight. That's not how it works. I mean, sometimes it works like that. But, <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, ultimately, you know, like you have to put in the work. Yeah. You know, sometimes um, my wife says I have this thing where I make everything look easy. Like I'm like a person where I have a great um, network of people that work with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the front. But behind me, there's a lot of stuff going on. And so people, so, so make connections with people, make relationships mm. with people, because there's nothing that I do by myself. So you say I'm the founder of my people. Yeah, I was the guy that came up with the name and all that. But there's been people with me from day one helping me be, to be able to grow that organization. And anything that I do, it's the same. So I would just tell the young people, go for what you want in your life, but recognize it's going to take hard work. And um, you have to make some connections. You got to make some relationships in this world. Yeah, I agree with you so much. Yeah. Powerful words. Yeah. Definitely powerful words. But before we end this, I have to ask you, who for you is the most influential person in black history and why? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say two. 
the the number one most influential person in my life was my father. And I, I mean, he may not be somebody that people would know all over the world, but I think in Hartford and other, any place that he he has been, he would have been known. And so my father, Abdul Rahman Muhammad, um, he was a social worker. He was a community person. Um, you know, just a great, great man overall. Um, and then, like somebody that everybody would know, I would say um, I, maybe Marcus Garvey. I like I like Marcus Garvey because I felt like. Um, he had a, a, a really big dream that he was trying to accomplish for black people. And I think that, you know, he really implemented a lot of things. The story didn't turn out exactly how he planned. But for me, I, I appreciate the, um, his willingness to be able to say, I'm going to do this and to be able to give it a, a big shot. So um, I would say Marcus Garvey. Wow. He, he was an entrepreneur, too, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I, I absolutely enjoyed this time with you. And thank you so much yes. for taking time out your busy day to come sit with us um, during our conversation series. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again, Mr. Abdul Rahman Mohammed, Executive Director and Founder of My People's Clinical Service. And thank you for joining us once again for Foundational Conversational Series. I'm Tiffany Young, Executive Director of the Hartford Yard Goats Foundation.